Uh, this is the mission 50 and today we have the the presentation of Rashika Babu uh, she will be talking about how would be the operation about uh, Lost Center in, in Mars uh, you are very welcome uh, Rashika you would be starting your presentation okay thanks so much thank you for the uh, introduction professor good morning Sol crew Firstly, I would like to extend my gratitude to Professor Julio for having me here for 50th mission and crew members for sharing abundant knowledge with interesting presentation and relevant facts. Thank you. I am Rashi Kalsan, Chief of Launch Center, 50th virtual mission. I'll be giving insights on the Launch Center today. The flow of my presentation like followed with a bit of mass environmental study visual concepts of the center, functionalities of the center, and as well as the technologies to be built at the habitat, organization of the crew and their role, R&D for the center, and, and the payload, like, necessary resources, and the protocols to be followed by departments, like interdepartments and intra-departments. Activities to be conducted, like, can be conducted on the earth, as well as the reference materials that I refer to prepare this research. So here is a quick environmental study of the Mars. Mars is an obvious target for exploration because it is very close to our solar system. But there are many more reasons to explore the red planet. Understanding whether life existed elsewhere is the question. In the universe beyond the Earth is a fundamental question of humankind. Mars is an excellent place to investigate this question because it is the most similar planet to Earth in the solar system. Evidence suggests that Mars was once full of water, warmer, and had a thicker atmosphere, offering a potentially habitable environment. While life arose and evolved on the Earth, Mars experienced a serious climatic change. Scientists are in interested in, historic, in the review of history of water on the Mars to understand how life could have survived. Samples of the atmosphere could reveal crucial details on its formation and evaluation, and also why Mars has less atmosphere than the Earth. Looking at the picture, we can see that there are like there are many different gases can be found on the Earth and Mars both, which are like very similar, but the percentage wise would be differed. But the trace gases, including argon, carbon dioxide, and other methane values, are like are in the same ranges even with the quantity and the quality as well uh, abundance of the carbon dioxide on the mars is like really high like around 96 percent this uh, like uh the but the million dollar question is like how a human being survive in the mars with the carbon dioxide abundancy this is like left to the scientists and the researchers for now mars can now help us to learn more about like our home Understanding Martian geophysical processes like promises to uncover details on the evolution of the history of Earth and other planets in our solar system. Thanks to the space agencies for making an interplanetary trip to Mars from decades. These missions like made it possible to have the results depicted in the tabular column in the first image. That I have shown only primary comparable aspects, but not the detailed one. The crucial point on constructing a living habitat in the Mars is gravity. Uh, can we simulate the artificial gravity inside the habitat to like ease the living of crew? Or will the crew eventually get habituated with the very less gravity compared to the Earth like while living on the Mars? Also, currently Mars has no magnetism. Like, also, there is no magnetic dipole similar to that of the Earth. Like, it is suspected that Mars has like really very cool and solid core, unlike Earth's liquid core. But the recent studies done, the results that sent by Mars Global Survey Mission spacecraft, it suggests that Red Planet was like magnetized more widely and strongly in geological past. Now I'll proceed with the main topic uh, after a bit of introduction on the environmental study. That is a visual concept. Thanks to Ash Rathod for the beautiful artistic view of the Habitat Marte. Here is the launch center. I think uh, my uh, you guys can see, like every uh, you can see the cursor. <coughs> this is at extreme end of the habitats. It is very necessary to consider the main driving parameters before going, like before designing our center, which includes the landing, uh, landing and launching site. And uh, like here, I'm excluding the part like which we have to deal with the uh, landing and launching site related to Earth's premises. 
during the launch uh, there should be a clearance of about like three kilometers to seven kilometers to avoid a risk on risk of life and habitat or you know, my like, tools and maintenance part and the center's injury and damages but it should be in optimal distance that such that the power requirements from the power substation and the um, engineering center like easily reachable without means of like uh, during, uh, without any constraints on the time as well as the logistics point of view the design launch pad should be capable to like, help in maximum number of launches with minimum maintenance hours this is very crucial with uh, availability of like really very less crew and the uh, employee like maintenance employers like we must have like less maintenance hour yet attain like uh, optimal excuse me mm, optimal efficiency as well as optimal uh, results everything and the launches as well most important parameter is uh, propellant storage units say it like we are using uh, cryogenic fuels or other liquid rocket engines do we have proper pressurizing units and the capability to store them at the right storage conditions are the points to be considered here firstly all the test experiments to be conducted with cargo rather than like human beings as the payload or crew launch mass of the payload should be maximized keeping the structural mass low yet this should be feasible and help in attaining the escape velocity because we are dealing in really very high uncertain environment though calculations whatever we do being on the earth would be considering few hypothesis doing some hypothesis or assumptions but when we do when we do some launch or accurate like any experiments being in situ the conditions would be differ would be different local weather and the launch window as we're dealing as i said in very uncertain environment that selection of the launch window should match with the arrival window considering the very abrupt environmental conditions and the extreme temperature ranges also some other supporting factors okay uh, it is a crucial point like while choosing the launching site or the landing sites this is concerning uh, dedicated to the launching and landing parameters referring to the right side image it is a tropographical map of the mars with rovers or landers sent till date most of the missions are near to equator this selection also depends on the experiments to be conducted and the region of interest the equator is exactly between pathfinder and the opportunity as we are planning to have a solar farm it is very necessary to have the habitat closer to this equator for better reach of sufficient sunlight all year round low elevation angle will allow us to have enough atmospheric braking during the descent of capsules or the vehicles with like passive stabilization and here we don't have any requirement on the active control or the active stabilization rock fit like we should select a site in such a way that the terrain is really very rock free and there is there are no like big uh, uh, craters this would like help in having a soft landing and avoid uh, unexpected abruptions we can explore many classic technologies for landing also we can make use of like micro spines uh, which is a vast domain for being used for like uh, being under research for the landers or the rovers in current trend referring back to the images the dark spots in the star like star kind of structures are called as the dark streaks as we take an oath of planetary protection from day one of the mission we are promised to protect it especially no rovers or landers are supposed to enter these regions without being sterilized as per science uh, scientist researchers research says Okay. Uh, these images are in support of my like previous statements like first image shows the exploration selection of the exploration zones uh, considering the region of interest or the experiments and the payload that will be sent to the mars uh, in situ exploration also a second image says that like we can look at the structures which is very complicated uh, in these uh, structures it is very impossible to sterilize to 100% accuracy for all the tools or the instruments and the overall structures as it is okay. Okay, this is a conceptual operations of mars sample return mission which is supposed to launch separate, uh, separately in uh, 2020s early 2020s or around 2026 
This mission will work together to achieve the objective of returning to Earth at a set of rigorously documented Mars atmospheric soil, rock, and other core samples before 2029, maximum 2030. Three potential landing sites are Zizero Crater, Northeast Citrus, and Columbia Hills. Sample return lander will launch in 2026, com comprising three element surfaces, surface platform, surface fetch rover, and Mars ascent vehicle, that is MAV. Here, the accuracy of bio sealing of the sample container and the guidance and navigation system is really very crucial. As we see here, orbit uh, sample return mission will get docked with the uh, Mars ascent vehicle. And again, as soon as it, uh, like during the descent, as soon as the Earth orbit is being achieved, the capsule will get detached and the orbiter will get diverted and it will be revolving around that. So the crucial part comes here with like, well, evaluating the aero uh, re entry phase of the this capsule because like the whatever the atmospheric conditions have like the experiments have conducted in the mars is completely different from when the re-entry is happening so it, it is really very crucial phases in like in every re-entry as well as the landing phases here so uh, this is concerning the visual concept of the launch vehicle the key factor we should concentrate on being working on the launch center is the interplanetary transfer with efficient propulsion technology the image shows the propulsion system of the Mars Ascent Vehicle. The, here I have shown only for this Mars Ascent Vehicle, not uh, with any other classical launch vehicles, just to have like brief idea. So when we speak about the propulsion system, we have like a really very high TRL system that is solid rocket motor being tested in like, most of the missions of very high missions and it has like it is very simpler and compact but here comes the drawback that is very less stable as well as we cannot have a control when we are in the landing phase or the descent phase because the throttleability is very less we can say no but uh, there are there is a research going on with where they can have like a con less throttable but the research is not uh, even with the trl4 or 5. Okay. then is the hybrid rocket motor this is something like uh, which is very very much in trend and there this is being implemented in this mass ascent vehicle as well it has got really a very high advantage but particularly for this mav because it has uh, it has a performance like it is capable to operate in very low temperature and also it is very stable being a uh, hybrid with it got the pros of the liquid rocket engine as well as the solid rocket mode as being like it has got like multiple starts being compact and also like the mass and the volume requirement would be really very less but we pay the cost when it comes to the thrust as well as the trl level because uh, it is not being tested in a very similar mission so the trl would be maximum six to seven because it is tested uh, for different mission but the uh, not the similar one so it's a risk factor here but also it is very advantageous to have experiments and get the results for future uh, human missions and when uh, in this like uh, while designing the mav uh, like, researchers have thought and have uh, designed like calculated the pork chop plot everything to find the best delta v using the solar electric propulsion and also here using the SCPs will depend on the phases of the mission, where we are working and what is the launch window, where are we now, what is the mission timeline and how the power production as well as the solar light availability, everything. Here the pros are like, it reduces the departure and Mars arrival V infinity, which is like, uh, which became the prime factor for researchers to have this in their MAV, like have it as a trade-off parameter basic a trade of technology basically and the co uh, cons are like as i said like uh, the power requirement varies throughout the mission it isn't constant because we don't know whether we are using it throughout the mission to have a static or like a uniform thrust requirement as well as the uh, isp requirements and also uh, using an electric propulsion will give very high isp but again uh, it is variable where we pay the cost here on terms of the consistency or the constants output Here is the visual concept uh, designed by the Ishroth, by Ishrathur. Here uh, for launch center, I'm considering uh, ground floor. OK, uh, okay. my culture is visible. Ground floor as level 00, zero and the first floor as level 01, and the uh, second floor as level 10. 
the habit, uh, the environment or the surrounding around this uh, launch center shall be considered as level one one. But I'm not going to touch this level one one part, which is outside the center. Can uh, like, referring to this first image, I can like it's just a uh, you can imagine that I'm really sorry I couldn't do the CAD designs due to university works. I'm really sorry about that. So here I'm, uh, I'm thinking to have uh, like like a dividable mechanism where we will have the rail mechanism this whole dome uh, will be divided as a half and it moves uh, very far during the launch or the re-entry of vehicles and the capsules it would be up to like, it depends on the mission as well like the conditions uh, it shall have the capability of railing around like one kilometers or more around maximum two kilometers considering all the safety factors and the safety margins Okay, uh, this image shows like a very surface level. It gives very surface level of like imagination or idea. How let's say this is a return vehicle or the capsule where uh, whatever we are supposed to send back to the earth. So this is the cross section of our launch center. Considering this is the level zero 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 one and one zero. So here we will have the access to work in the launch area as well as we shall have rooms here, which I'll show in detail in the next coming slides. And also here, there shall be abundant space to have the sub the movement of the sub assemblies or the, for the crew to move around to work on the capsules or the integrations and assemblies or the calibrations and the health checks of the capsules before like it is ready to go, like leave the Mars area. And uh, this is the dome. Uh, basically, these are from the telescopic uh, like observatories. So we can make use of like similar mechanism as well, but completely controlled through remote or uh, autonomous and uh, with the command system, which we use already in the existing uh, observatories, basically. OK. Uh... Okay, my cousin is here. So here, uh, it shall get opened up like this, and then it gets divided based on the, uh, like, based on our command, and even for the maintenance as well as uh, any other uh, requirements, we can have this movement. Like, it shall be with a bell, uh, bearing system, which would ease the process for the uh, maintenance and the surveillance, which I'll show in the next slide, so you'll get a clear idea. Okay, this is the con like uh, very like surface level to have an idea what are all the operation centers or the rooms we'll have in the level zero zero. This shall give an entry to our launch center, which connects through the main station for other substations. Here we shall have one single entry to avoid any unexpected uh, foreign objects or any abruptions basically. So zero is the entrance from other centers. And here, one is a propuls propulsion storage unit. Here, the cap this room should be capable of like having a pressurizing unit with safety precautions, and also uh, tiny research areas where uh, the monitoring unit, as well as the production of the fuels and the um, methane and carbon dioxide, oxygen extractions, everything shall happen. In the second block, this is the launch or mission control room with a conference room because like here the th this is the place where the com commander has the access to and all the control center or the co coordination with the earth and other departments like uh, inter centers in the habitat map will happen through room two that is mission control center okay oh, okay i'm so sorry about that my cousin isn't seen uh, very quickly okay here is the room three here uh, I'm, I'm imagining like uh, I'm expecting to have an engineering room here where we can have the sub assembly and the tools department. Uh, it is very necessary to have the tool de tools department in each uh, levels because like uh, it's not uh, it's not so good to have like uh, accessible in just one storage unit and go there and look for because we have to act immediately whenever there is an emergency as well as whenever there is an like uh, unexpected like, unforeseen uh, situations basically so uh, sub assembly as in like uh, if we have a stack like let's say uh, considering this 
vehicle like we have we will have the stacks like the structures everything instead of having the complete assembly here we can have the structural configuration of the cords or shrouds everything in this uh, room and then we can uh, transport it to the launching area for the final integration and the final assembly so that this would avoid the chaos chaotic conditions in the launch areas and it would ease the process of like having the main assembly very clean and calibrated there then here fourth room is the uh, received or uh, received payload or the payloads that to be uh, returned to the earth basically Th this is very sensitive area because like uh, payloads if we have any extractions or the results that we extracted from the regolith that are to be researched uh, we have to go under research in the main centers or the, any other engineering departments or mainly in the earth if we want to send like it should be really like a properly sealed and it should be very clean and there is no contamination or the foreign objects even tiny dust would matter a lot here so this fourth room is very clean i'm sorry okay because i see uh, here uh, as i like as i've put a block here this is the clean or sanitation room for the crew engineers it is connected here to the fourth room because wherever like whenever uh, any crew member or the, the people who are working there or the maintenance everything they have to come to this clean room and if they want to access any payloads or they want to do any research they have to come to this clean room and then uh, go enter this payload area basically so it is like interconnected this is the only section that will have interconnections here in our launch center to have to be, to be respectful respectful for the regulator the experiments we are conducting and this is a refreshment area for like if the crew is really tired they can go and have a quick nap or use toilets cafeteria or like uh, take a break of, uh, by watching some series of 15 to 20 minutes Th that is very much necessary is there is like a power nap of 20 minutes will give energy for next like two hours so it it would be really very necessary so this sanitation and changing area is connected here it, it makes sense to have the fifth room here and a uh, green block shows like they are the vertical gardens or grow wood i've included in this in uh, where a crew member would be seated for really very long time and it is very necessary to have the high level of oxygen output for to ease the process like uh not to feel the or to be very energetic so this is not there in the energetic room as well as in the propellant suction because we must we are really very skeptical about uh, like what are the experiments that we are doing and the uh, rooms uh, that is allotted for this is the level zero one and uh, same as I said, like zero is the elevator or passage to connect to the level one, one level one zero and the level zero zero. And here is the water storage unit. Here uh, I have put like water storage here, especially considering the fact that like there is a propulsion a propellant storage unit right below that building, so that we don't have any sensitive or very uh, the parameters which would get affected due to the pressurizing units underneath or like uh, we cannot take risk uh, keeping very like the power subsystem or the server units though if we would like we as a rocket scientist like we are very smart but we we have to be very skeptical and thinking the worst case scenarios we have to build our habitat for to ease our li livings as well as not to take any risk and injuries and also the water uh, the recycling of the used water for the the daily work and the extraction of the water oxygen the using electrolysis experiment shall be done in this water storage unit and the, the water supply to the whole launch center shall happen from the first one the water storage unit section so second block is power subsystem unit here like uh, in this floor like uh, it, the like the crew in this power subsystem unit or the head of this department is in charge of the proper su power supply and the uh, maintenance and the health checks of the whole launch center here all the electrical and digital server units shall be placed here because you know we are going digital for everything even to turn on the door and to access the elevators everything is digital basically capcom command and basic and the uh, rotation of the dome the railing of the buildings everything is done digitally and also since we have like really like 
mission control center which will communicate all the way back to earth we must also think about like cyber security as well as like uh, uh, authenticate our data uh, encrypting and also we need really a lot many servers which are like highly protected and the power subsystem is like very sensitive parameter even the little fluctuation very uncertain environments so, like it would be a risk factor here so all the maintenance room with the digital server units shall be placed in block two and here is like uh, favorite area we can say uh, kitchen and entertainment here i have placed like we can cover the maximum space here to have the vertical garden or the grow boot hub. I'll, I'll show what is the grow boot hub would look like and how we can make use of it in our habitat. So here we shall have entertainment area as well to have uh, family, like crew dinner, lunch, everything. And this fourth one is a personal space with uh, private bed space and toilets, just change also uh, spacesuit and personal storage. Here, uh, as people sleep, like crew will have they spend their like whole night here, it's very necessary to have a high amount of oxygen to increase the brain activity and to have a peaceful sleep that is like very highly necessary. Long center, this is level one one and zero i have kept it same as elevator and passage and first one is very uh, surveillance area here as i said this blocks is expandable that we uh, as i explained that removal like it goes uh, two and fourth and it gets divided so i have excuse me i have not shown the columns and all very clearly i'm really sorry about it but this would be fine that, to get a surface level of idea and we will have like a uh, extra storage unit tools and maintenance room where the accessibility will be very rare uh, only when it is necessary and also the log log area wherever we we keep all our like uh, further usable storage units everything and here like also it is uh, since we will have like lesser diameter when it comes to less uh, like up of level one one we can have a surveillance of our launch area or the capsule for the better view and also through the crane mechanism or the robotic arm it would be easy for us to reach the heat shield part to check for a proper health checks or the thermal protection shield checks by square wise or the with the easily reachable without any risk actually from this uh, level one one and uh, I, I didn't say about the, the suction gate. Uh, he, this comes the protective or the insulation, which would look like this. Uh, ignore the part of the central unit because it is completely different from what I'm visualizing, like I'm proposing for my lawn center. So the eighth one would be comprised with ice chambers, which is shown in blue color. And the whitish blue shall be carbon dioxide insulation to protect the complete habitat, basically. And also, uh, you might question me that uh, when the lawn setter with the rail mechanism, they get divided. Yeah, uh, I still have not figured out the technical part or the engineering aspect. But whenever it happens, we shall have this protecting shield all the way, like the complete mold as well, like as a complete mold where uh, crew shall not be there. It's completely controlled through main station or the engineering station. Then once the compact and there is a ready to go, once the they get uh, docked to each other of the launch or the descent, then the entry shall happen. Still, uh, even during those times, there shall be a protective shield on. Okay, this is the visual concept of the Grow Boot Hub. This is a project uh, funded by Swiss Space Center as well as the European Space Agency. This is a completely automated system for growth and harvest of, harvest of the vegetables. So these days like machine learning is really very much in a trend starting from editing the photographs to developing a really very hardcore algorithms so this is based on the machine learning algorithm where the robotic arm shall send a message to mcc or the respective department or through the alert system in its own block itself whenever the fruit or vegetable is ready to be consumed so it would be a very wise way to have it implemented under a protective shield in all the units and also the outlet shall have uh, like it shall have an outlet where it just outputs only the oxygen so this is what i proposed in my units even in the living area as well as in the kitchen like personal bed space everywhere okay. technologies to be developed 
on our habitat for its habitat construction or the lawn center construction. Firstly, the prime thing is when it comes to lawn center is the launch pad construction. Uh, the launch pad or the area, the distance from the other centers as well as the in, in internal core should be very much protected and with the optimal distance. It should, the, uh, if we should give like, there shouldn't be any damage to the crew or the maintenance room due to the plumes or the dust when they are, whenever the launch or the descent is there. So uh, in Hawaii, there was an experiment conducted like using the robot to construct the launch pad using Mars regolith. So we can make use of the Mars regolith to construct like very thick and productive launch pad for having the, with the sensors uh, where it shows the, the glowing mechanism will be there whenever there is a descent happening and with the proper docking mechanism. So it you in this robot uses 100 pavers made of locally available material and it is very efficient and Success, like I should provide the link, it would be very nice to have a look at this. The production of the propellants, which is very prime factor when it comes to our launch center, is we can make use of the swarm robot with a scooping mechanism. This is uh, this would be really helpful when we are like producing in a very large scale, and also we have to think about the storage units as well. Here, here this mechanism, this roller kind of mechanism shall scoop out the regolith and with the intermediate technology like whatever the quantity it has been obtained like it shall go to the onboard like the say here and then the storage the extraction or the bifurcation of the materials shall be done here and then it is stored in a optimal like storage containers this is uh, this was uh, proposed by NASA, like how to use robo robots to create a rocket fuel from Martian soil. It is really very interesting technology. And extraction water from regolith, like we can have an experiment or the setup to, uh, electrolysis, like to have the uh, hydrogen as well as the oxygen. And again, when it comes to the liquid hydrogen, which we use as a prime fuel uh, in the propulsion propulsion system. It, it is very hazardous to store it and the conditions to be, uh, for the liquid hydrogen to be kept is like it is very different so it can be stored as a ch4 by combining carbon we know that carbon dioxide availability is very much abundant on the mass also technologies like radiation shield like as i explained we can have the ic shield with the carbon dioxide insulation and moxie is an experiment like uh, sent in a perseverance mission spacecraft that is mass oxygen in situ resource, uh, resource utilization experiment uh, finger crossed that uh, whatever the, the results of the experiment shall be very accurate as well as we have some good news that we the oxygen availability would be very high that for uh, it would which would be sufficient for all the crew members or the habitat that we are going to have in future coming days and this is just a uh, Sorry, flow chart of the working of the moxie moxie here the ox water oxygen extracted and the carbon dioxide are extracted oxygen supply to for the daily consumption shall be done only after filtering so it is we, we are not risking with any lives here the functionalities so firstly when it comes to the functionalities the autonomous system which is like a which is very common and a must thing to have like in all the centers with the adopted emergency alert and the environment simulation inside the center frequent health checks of the power turmoil and all the working systems so we cannot risk with the algorithm and uh, we must have like proper health checks on a regular basis which shall be like supplied through the protocols logistics and maintenance like Lawn Center is responsible for the having maintained the schedule and the log of the uh, materials in inter uh, stations, inter habitat, or from the earth and everything. They have to take care of all the power and the thermal subsystem units as well, apart from the maintenance and the engineering sections as well also. So how cool it would to have a mass GNSS or one web. So since we are planning like a really very long term mission with thousands of human beings to to be sent to on the mass so it would be really great to have our own genesis or one web accessible but does launch center take care of this but yes through the launching of the satellites or helping the swarm robots to have this accessible everything and the exhibition of the regolith like it is 
through the experiments or they are conducted through what have shown this uh, robotic mechanism or the rover rollers mechanism we can produce the waters and the fuel from the regolith and also we have to store the extracted materials properly which should be sent to the other centers for research or any other production maybe like using the regolith they shall like in the engineering centers they'll have the 3d printing done for the regular daily basis in the equipments or the tools and habitat life and payload protection or safety so it is also a function of a launch center to take care of its payload uh, to be protected from the radiation and the galactic cosmic rays and the storms which are very hazardous and just like very unpredictable uh, sometimes in some um, unforeseen scenarios and also it should be very much uh, like since we are dealing in very uncertain environment environment we should be aware of the possible invaders which would affect the crew as well as the sensitive payloads and we have to do a research and development on the like the optimal way to have a calibration of the instruments or the lifestyle of the crew in order to have a, a efficient outcome or the efficient outcome as well as like a results which would by going local without having to get the much of the payload from the earth so that we can have uh, so that it should be in such a way that like most of the things are done in situ rather than getting it as like outsourced from the earth and regular communication and coordination with other centers it is mainly with the mission control center contacting the habitat main station as well as the earth so this is like point of contact and scheduling the launch and land which i said earlier how many crew, this is like interesting part that everybody want to be part of the team but how many roles do we have and what are they working what are their positions what are they tasks so we shall have one commander who got the final decision in all the happenings in the launch center also he's a he acts as a mission control center head he reports to the main station or the project director who is working and coordinating from the earth he like is kind of similar to the project director on the mars and he, all the crew members and the manager department managers everyone shall report to the commander and we shall have department man three department managers who would have got engineering skills and they shall be the point of contact with respect to the power unit maintenance unit with the engineering departments or the main power stations in the habitat mart they everything and they shall set the protocols of their department that to be followed by all the crew members everything and the approve will be done by the commander of this our launch center and there shall be researchers as we are focusing on going local and making use of the regolith to manufacture or to develop a tools with through 3d print or the production of the food fuel everything we shall have a researchers like geologist or microbiologist they shall be in charge of like, excavation and use of the regolith they shall also take care of the payload inspection and the research and development on bringing up the innovative technologies shall have one surgeon who is also a chef in our lawn center so he is a medical professional and nutritional coach to all the crew members but he must possess a technical skills with proper training to act uh, in a very uh, very speedily in unforeseen situations or the em or like emergency but also he should be very good at knowledge on terraforming being a nutrition coach that it would it wouldn't be so difficult to get a hands on the terraforming because not just with grow wood like uh, once we go uh for like plan a long time mission so it would be very necessary have a production of the uh locally available fruits and vegetables everything like in a large quantity so he shall be in charge of that as well so what are the necessary resources considering uh five days of lockdown you can this uh very unforeseen condition covid 19 so the consumption of the food per day per crew this is considering the uh, higher level of requirement shall be two kgs and the drinking water which is a very optimal very healthy way to have at least three liters of water in a day 
and four liters of uh, daily using miscellaneous water purposes here i have taken very higher threshold of four liters because considering the situation it is advised to keep ourselves clean whenever we, co we come in contact with the other crew members or whenever we transport from one place to another one center to another center so it would be very recommend it is recommended to have a complete wash or shower and uh, 0.5 liters in uh, crew will be working and in the propellant area or the payload section. So as I had suggested, the sanitation center, like full body sterilization before and after space use. So the diluted sterilization liquid expected around to 50 ml. So in total, the requirement for five days for seven crew members of like totally seven, uh, the raw food that is solid food requirement would be 70 kg and the uh, water like consuming drinking drinkable water is around one for 105 liters and then the daily usage usable water is around 140 liters with sterilization liquid 8.75 liters this is considering like a very higher threshold and for average like normal person it it varies from crew to crew on the daily basis and the number of calories that they, ha they would have burnt in that in particular day or their mood or their cravings everything here comes the main part that are like there is protocols to be followed in the habitat i have uh, come up with uh, six different protocols to be followed routing department machinery planetary intercenter and other activities let's see in detail this is a routine protocols which would be uh, very much similar to all the different all other centers in the habitat because the, this routine protocol shall be set by the main station but uh, with an in charge of uh, like a commander would be in charge to make sure that it has been followed like on a daily basis we shall have a stand up meeting that whatever the task done in the previous day to do for the day and the important re remainders of the day or the coming next week and health check of all the instruments before starting any work or turning on any instruments before their shifts shifts they should have a health check of all the instruments and alarming system emergency units everything and check of autonomous systems yeah uh, the same thing like uh, it is same as health checks of all the instruments with the uh, remotely controlled the accuracy level and the uh, time lag between the command as well as the response of the instruments or the door slidings whatever the autonomous systems we have in the center launch part maintenance to have like since we'll be having very sensitive payloads and all it is very highly necessary to have uh, maintenance on the launch pad as well to avoid any foreign objects report and damage okay uh, this comes later in the center's protocols and maintain the log of all the activities it is advised for starting from the commander to the chef it is very much like necessary to have a main like have a log of the daily activities, considering the way they work, how long, everything in detail with the initials. Department protocol protocols. This is to be designed by the department manager and then approved by the commander, which shall have the circulation in all the centers and the interdepartments as well. They circulate the mission and vision of their respective departments and instruction manual of the each instruments concerning their departments and how to use it. Maintain a log of health checks and safety systems. Maintain a log of working hours of each tool and instruments. 2.4 and 2.5 comprises, but that it, it can be done digitally or like a manually. If I'm making use of any instruments, uh, instead of having a log or like just uh, knowing okay i remember it I, I work it for 10 a.m to 11 a.m no it's not necessary because i might stop my stiff shift by 12 and there might be another crew who will work from one so it is very much necessary to have a digital or like visible log that health check status okay check and then the number of hours it operated two hours three hours and how was the response whether a, any uh, deviation in the results or any malfunctions in the instruments it is very much necessary to have this all like maintained as a log daily log or hourly log and report to the department manager or the command like head of the center of missing or damaged tool or the instruments for any malfunctions and daily progress report on ongoing tasks every shift like before the shift order the task to be done and whether it's done or not and how to take over from the unfinished job for the next shift crew it is it's very much necessary to not to have a word but a written log everything to have to maintain so that it would be easier for everyone to understand and follow the next protocols
So machinery protocols, this is dedicated to the instruments designed by the departments, and it would be separate for all the instruments, rules, toolbox, everything that we would have in our lawn center. How to use each equipment or the machines and clearly indicate the do's and don'ts and with the the operating ranges, whether it may be temperature limits or the uh, revolution per minute, everything, and adopt the warning system with the uh, light indication or sound alarming. Whenever we have a temperature zone like 100 degrees Celsius, is cross it with one or two degrees Celsius, there should be a warning system so that the crew would be aware that there is a threshold cross, like, and he has to quickly react to the to bring it back to the optimal working conditions. A regular calibration of the instruments, which is necessary, it would be quarterly, monthly. It depends on the requirement of this particular machines and the number of working hours in the center. Planetary protection. As I said, like we take an oath as a, to protect our planet and the solar system, everything, we should follow the com like rules and regulations set by Committee of Space Research and other international authorities. So like we should prohibit the fly or run of rovers or robots in the restricted zones, which I said, dark streaks. So this is a very beautifully designed poster by like Florida Institute of Technology students, uh, where they are working on a sustainable development on the Mars, like go green on the red planet as a, like making use of the locally available materials rather than like having it contaminated by using like uh, very hazardous equipments or like having outsourced with so many instruments or equipment from the earth. This is in the center protocol since we have like all the substations, like whatever the major substations we have in the habitat Marty, we shall have a units in our subsist like in our lawn center as well. So that it, it is highly necessary to have like internally agreed protocols that regarding like a periodic meetings or the communications with our department managers and coordinate the supply of essentials and uh, for any other requirements and reports the task or, or status of the mass to the main station because we might need a high level of power requirement might be high to run a, a very heavy machinery at some point of the time to conduct some experiments. Then we should intimate a power station manager or the power station commander to have it done. And whenever it's happening, Main, main station will have to know whatever it's happening in every other center. So it's like main station is the primary point of contact. So these are other protocols which includes the leisure activities as well as like uh, when it comes to cleaning or other parameters. So crew should ensure about their physical fitness and the nutritional diet. They should often consult the available nutrition diet like who is a chef as well as a surgeon in our center. And they should take leisure as their priority. As we are like away from isolated and being away from the family and friends, and like physically we might be active, but uh, it, the, whatever the task we do won't be productive when we are not mentally not healthy, or we might know subconsciously, like we might be thinking of something else or some family, friends, or the happenings in the other words. So it is very much necessary to, get off from all the workers and play some games, involve in group discussions and make something as a hobby and uh, have a social life in, with the crew because crew is an extended family at the habitat. So it, it is very much advised to have a family lunch or dinner. So this is just a survey done while these are like, uh, uh, I don't remember the university or the agency name. So it is basically while designing a human mission on the Mars, what are all the process or the protocols that we should follow as a human beings in the Earth? So they just uh, they did an experiment, or it's a statistical approach where they conducted an experiment on six astronauts and thirteen space employees. So astronauts re like were in the need of like privacy by like nearly 100% or 90%. So they might be missing their family or they might not feel welcomed with other crew members. So it is very much necessary to have a like social hours, right, which which can be said as a protocol by the main station or the commander of our launch center. So what are all the activities that we can have it on the earth? So for, main thing is, which is very famous since decades, follow four, four hours, that is reduce, reuse, recycle, and recover of all hazardous uh, materials. It would be plastics or any other uh, 
recycling, going green, everything, locally available materials. And also when it comes to the propellant here, in my university, as well as like in many other agencies, universities, uh, all researchers are working on like going green with the propellants, which are like non-toxic. So this is highly necessary. If we are able to get a high level of TRL with non-toxic propellants in the similar missions, it would make our lives easier to reach the mass. So this is really a walk thing. Then replace the robots for life risk jobs. It's very unnecessary to risk our lives to get some tasks done where we are like, as a rocket scientist, as well as the we are in the digital world, like we have our hands on digital platforms so we can have the robots easily accessible for every kind of jobs and then expand the biomimic like we can learn so many things from looking at our nature uh, when it comes to aeronautical industry flapping wings mechanism in the glider system using the bamboo uh, sticks or the bamboo trees we can have the flapping wings without any active controls for the uh, daily hobby e experiments everything and we can go with the bioprinting with the uh, easily available regulate or the whatever the clay modeling as explained in the previous uh, presentations as well like example masha 3d or the clay printing everything so as we concern about the sustainability on mass this is just a poster that i showed earlier since we have a plan of uh, a very long term mission so here is just a small video developed by few of our friends as a group just to have working on the space travel if we have our habitat set there and if we have a uh, very good like uh, technology already there it would be a good advantage to have the space tourism or the travel in the space make it happen like in a efficient way so this can be just a visual concept just to have like how the space traveling could be done between Earth and the Mars or in interplanetary in, in space, basically. This is just like 20 seconds video, I'll play it. So this is how we could travel from Earth to Mars. Like it would, our lives would be easier, and we could we get to travel not just from country to country, but from a planet to planet, with all like very easily accessible all the equipment, entertainment areas, research laboratories, everything. And these are like uh, very few references that I refer to, which are like which I found very useful and interesting to read, apart from other references. Thank you so much. Thank you for like giving me an opportunity to uh, explain my research on the Launch Center. I'm open for any questions. Uh, thank you, Rashika, for the wonderful pre presentation. It was very nice. Uh, I have one question. Hmm? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, like I was working on this uh, topic, like regarding the presence of uh, water in Mars. So Sorry, like, come again. Presence of water in Mars. Water. Okay. Okay. Like you told to uh, turn the red planet to green planet. So, like, I found some material regarding uh, water. Like, uh, okay. there are some uh, ice uh, present in the uh, pole of the Mars, which are mm -hmm. having, uh, like, it, it is like, a, you know, like a dried uh, carbon, carbon ice. It's not a water ice, but a carbon ice. Yeah. So, do you have any evidence regarding this thing or do you have any uh, no? um, i do not have any technical details on this this is uh, based on the research that uh, all the spacecraft sent have done mm -hmm. because uh, in as you said, mentioned in the polar regions it's like uh, very few or like maybe maximum two or three spacecrafts have been sent to the special zones uh, like i had indicated in the map that what are the special zones so yeah, yeah. I, I don't know whether we have abundant uh, re like supporting results on this but this was a technology proposed by our researchers basically the using the insulation that i see things 
no because i read about this thing like you know like in some article they are saying ki the presence of water is there and due to mm-hmm. the very thin atmosphere of the mars the water mm-hmm. may have escaped the atmosphere and uh, like uh, you know like you, you told ki uh, people are planning to turn the red planet into a green planet so a lot of uh, river uh, eco friendly techniques are been used so uh, i mean uh, going green on the red planet doesn't actually mean having the construction or like having the plantation mm-hmm. of the sapling as mm-hmm. external like but using the locally available materials instead of mm-hmm. having uh, the hazardous elements basically mm-hmm. so going local it means mm-hmm. no i i don't have a question like it's not a question ah, okay okay just you know like i found the information i am sharing like is it is it true like water is present like can professor also uh, put some points regarding this thing uh, professor julio can you uh, say something regarding this thing uh, because i was reading so it was it will be very helpful for me to get some more information yes i congratulate hashika for the presentation thank you professor yes i would like one of my my doubts is a uh, is where where will where uh, would be happening the propellant production because we need the fuel to uh, prepare the rockets to return to earth okay and mm-hmm. then i don't know if uh, would be necessary a, a new facility a specific facility to to produce to produce the the propellant because uh, but, uh, you talk, you talked about uh, the moxie okay the moxie maybe yeah you can talk yeah okay uh when it comes to the production unit like i didn't re- like wanted it didn't specify in the launch center because when it comes to the production of the fuel or the propellant it would be very toxic or hazardous and it would not be advised to have it in the very much uh, easily reachable areas so it would be very l- in very distant but we can have like once the extraction is happened we can have it uh, at the storage unit just before the launch so if we are able to find a crater or a very large space with the available of like water content or the ic materials available we can have the production unit there so that we would avoid the risk of the life injury or the ex- explosion with the centers so it would we would need a different production unit basically yes also one of my worries is about is related to we use only just one uh, infrastructure to the launch center because maybe in the landing of the the rocket the the rocket would be impacting in the in the main facility and then because of this we are considering a maybe a separated infrastructure uh, to receive the rocket because maybe it would be dangerous uh, like a rocket like a it's not uh e- e- arriving in a specific spot and then maybe we'll be colliding with some parts of the uh facility of the main facility and then this would be dangerous for the for the uh the space up that yes, yes uh, this is one one of my comments about yeah okay uh just to justify that like uh here i thought like being and taking assumptions that the capsule is like whatever the launch pad construction are like very much protective and also using the railing systems we can have the habitat the center moved like a kilometers apart without having without give, taking any risk on the payload as well as on the center basically so if we are expecting like from the decades together if we are expecting really huge launch vehicles with the uh, high thrust and the plumes so it is uh, very highly necessary to have a different uh, launch pad constructions at where like maybe very much closer to the propulsion manufacturing unit so that we would avoid the logistics and the transportation of the propulsion yes but also as you said the experience that uh, yes also uh, we 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 need also think about uh, what kind of material you uh, would be used to build is the that is receiving a, a return of the the fire of the uh, engine is engine is burning the fuel and then how this would be impacting in the the materials of the 
I don't know if, if what what kind of material would be used, like maybe a kind of cement to be building the the launch pad. I don't know, uh, but it's a uh, or if you be used, it would be used like that three D print three D printing technology to create the launch pad, something like this. And then uh, this is one of my. Uh, of my interest about yeah oh i think uh, the coming to the technical part of this i shall do like other research and i can come back to you because i didn't think about the materials point of view just a surface level of research i did and i explained and also i read in a paper that they uh, the robot which i showed like they have made use of the aluminium spray and all to have the productive casing over the regularly built the pavers on the pavers basically but when it comes to technical part, like I can look and look into it and get back to you in more details. Also, on, on the topic of uh, uh, risk point, is the quantity of dust. You no, know, in the process of landing and launching, uh, will be spread out a, a great uh, amount of of dust. You no, know, in the covering every. But I believe it's uh, also uh, it's not uh, in our missions. It's not we are not con concluding the discussion. No, it's, we are uh, starting. Uh, your presentation <laughs> is very good to bring some elements, and then we think more. Maybe mm -hmm. in the future we maybe will be organizing a specific mission about the the launch pad because because there's a lot of uh, a lot of elements to be discussing about. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, when it comes to the uh, payload storage unit and also it is very critical actually. So there are so many points maybe we can work on like in the coming days. Also, uh, the the Moxie technology is some, is very uh, something new, and then you <laughs> don't know uh, how how they will be the capacity to produce a great amount of of also oxygen and and propellant. Yeah. And it's very something new. I don't know how many years we we will need to to see this technology operation operational. And then this is one of the topics that we need. Uh, also, space research need to uh, think more about this topic too. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is very much interesting. And also, we don't know the, how the accuracy level of operating of this Moxie basically. Yes, because if you see uh, in the Perseverance rover, they are using, I don't know, it's maybe eight, eight, 18 kilos, it's like something like this. This is uh, maybe 40, 40 centimeters inside the Perseverance. Uh, Professor, uh, I cannot hear you. Uh, I don't know, we, for the... Your internet is broken, Professor. Yes, it's Professor breaking. Professor, your voice is no? breaking. Yes, sorry. Yes. Try to, to close the... Yes, sorry. Uh, yes, I'm talking the the Perseverance room. Yeah. Yes, in the Perseverance rover, they are using the... Uh, they will be producing a small amount of, of oxygen. Uh, but for the future space, it's a, a very, very a, a great deal of propellant. Uh, so uh, I would like to to congratulations to say congratulations to you, Hashika. Really nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very interesting and new topics. Uh, I would just add some comments. I do not have any question uh, regarding to the machinery protocols that you have proposed. I, I think this is an interesting thing, mainly on the launch center or maybe on the engineering center, because like we are we will be dealing with um, like high tech machinery and uh, like robust machinery and then it will be necessary as you mentioned like to have the regular calibration to have accuracy and shielding of the systems and also uh, considering the launch center uh, as you were talking uh, 
related to the fuels and the protons that will be there we need to uh, we need to consider like uh, how would be how how would be dangerous uh, to have this kind of of, of problems or of these things inside of the structures and also like in contact with the technology with the electrical part i, I don't know what to like we have uh, if we have um, the electrical part with uh, associated with water we will have oxidation but we don't know how it would be happening with the tech with the electronic and electric part um, when are exposed to any kind of propellant or or maybe the radiation I don't know and uh, and the other comment is I I really liked the the when you when you said that related to to the biomimic I really liked the the biomimic design also I was uh, searching on this topic and also studying something related to it more related to project development. But um, when we consider the, the uh, an, an habitat in space, a, a habitat in space, um, I think this would be like uh, will allow us the most uh, familiar um, approach for the astronauts. You know, like a more Earth-like approach for the astronauts, like to see how something would be operating on Earth, how we have any kind of systematic, any kind of design on Earth. And then we're uh, we'll trying to the astronauts will be trying to replicate replicate this, In the this kind of thing. Yes, really interesting. Congratulations! And okay. also, I was I was wondering here, uh, uh, Montal. I didn't catch the question you made to Professor Julio. Maybe uh, if you ask again, we we could we can discuss more related to it. Uh, can I can I say the question again? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So my question was like I found some article regarding uh, presence of water or ice, not water, presence of ice in uh, Mars. So is it uh, like usable? Like can we use it for the habitat? Of uh, the ice, I, I I was so there are uh, an approach related to the habitat concept uh, like using the ice uh, as a, a radiation shielding you know and then maybe uh would be an interesting thing considering that we have in a in a specific part of, of the martian surface we will have more ice and more colder areas and then if we have the uh, water shielding and ice water shielding Maybe it will be an interesting thing to to be operating. Like in the previous mission, I was I was uh, proposing in in the design in the the structure design, like to have a a habitat with um, um, surrounded by water. You know the the, the walls and the, the the floor, and then we will have like we will we will be having a thermal regulation with the water and also we will be having the radiation shielding at the same time i think this would be this would be a, an interesting approach related to the ice you know okay yeah thank you so these are my comments congratulations again Shika. really really thank interesting you. thank you so much thank you thank you uh, Rashika, for the it was very good and yeah thank you. it's very informative thank you but there are so many uh, technical also, things that have that should have been clear, like but it would take like really long on the research. And uh, also, we after we'll be organizing Rashik, if you accept, uh, uh, we'll be organizing a, a webinar about, about this topic. Okay. Or, or the topic of of your interest, also topics of interest of Mondal too. Okay, in the independent of the of the mission, in other weeks, in the next weeks, something like this. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Also, I'll be listening in the video. I don't know if my internet is a. Uh, we had a lot of broken moments. I don't know if this brings images to the recording of the, the the presentation again. 
Okay, okay, uh, no problem. Okay. Okay, a model is okay for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, everything. Yeah, but it's still in uh, recording. I, I, I won't be. Oh, okay, it's, it's recording. It's still uh, recording. Won't be, it won't be possible for me, Mondal, to to participate in the meeting yeah. tomorrow because it it will be on the same at the same time of my class or of the graduation class. You know. But I, uh, can we do like? Oh, can we do as little bit late or in some other time like can we delay it will be uh, from from 9 a.m uh sorry it will be in brazilian time let me make the conversions um it will be uh at uh, from 12 12 yes 12 12 p.m for uh until um i i will confirm this i maybe it would be like one one hour and, and a half later than uh of our 